NC Lab review, bell work. So Aristotle did not have a violent death. He died of a stomach disease. Compared to other ancient Greeks like Archimedes, he was murdered. Said Socrates, he died of poison. The <laughs> Plato, natural causes. So he how old was it when he died? So Claire, how old was Democritus when he died? Ninety. Ninety, that's amazing. Yeah. Right, so Aristotle was sixty-two, a little bit younger. Were they were they both living at the same time? No. Well, it says here that three seventy. Yes. Three eighty four he was born, so yeah, they were both living at the same time. Aristotle was born in three eighty four. Yeah, they go backwards. They go backwards to zero and they start going forward. Yeah. Yeah. So um yeah. How old was Aristotle when Democritus died? Fourteen. It's fourteen when he died. It wasn't really a new way to do things. I mean you go back to like Greek and Egypt and you can see all sorts of symbols for various words like silver has up here all these different symbols associated with it and gold as well so it was just a way for him to relate with other cultures and from a priestly he was the one that in 1733 to 1804 he was a minister and he was the one who determined hydrogen was flammable in a, in a candle so he was the one who isolated hydrogen and showed that it was actually an element and then Dalton came along and put them in a table noticed it was the lightest element and established it one so that's very important to see that John Dalton was working and read about other people he knew John Dalton knew about Joseph Priestley everybody clear nearly 70 by the 1860s and what the list of was Elements might be solid, liquid, or gaseous, yellow, green, black, or white, or colorless, crumbly, or bendy, wildly reactive, or relatively inert. One thing soon became clear. Some elements were more alike than others. Sodium and potassium both reacted violently with water. Chlorine, fluorine, and bromine all combined on a one-to-one -one basis with sodium and potassium. Carbon and silicon both hooked up with two oxygens, etc. One morning in 1969, a Russian man named uh, Dmitry Mendeley woke up with an idea. List the elements in order of increasing atomic weight and do a text wrap as regular, er, at re regular intervals. The result was sort of a table with elements arranged in rows. Here's a baby version of Mendeley's Mendel <coughs> table. Uh, you'll see the real thing. Next chapter. The elements show a periodic pattern. Each vertical column contained chemically similar elements. In fact, Mendeley, no or Mendeley noted gaps farther down the table in the successful predicted, or successfully predicted new elements that would fill them. Very good. Nice job. Okay, so John Dalton, he was born in 1766. So that's really less than 280 years that we really had elements associated with symbols. So if you look here, he published a table and he gave the elements a symbol. Like hydrogen, he had this circle and a dot. And phosphorus looks like the peace sign, right? And gold, it has a special little symbol there and sulfur. Why would he do symbols? What would be the reasoning behind a symbol? Right, you can go quick. What essential concept did Aristotle and Democritus disagree on? You right now? If you look at table 4.1, right? And you'll see the ideas. So what main idea did they disagree on? Oh, Raise your hand. Okay. Like, Michaela, and what are they saying about matter? It was like... Uh, Marcus. Mm -hmm. It was like matter is composed of atoms, and then Aristotle said matter is made of earth, fire, air, and, and water. Okay, that's good. But what other 
there's a really big concept that they both disagreed on. One said that this does exist, the other said it does not exist. What did they say they were debating on? Carlos? Empty space, that's the main idea. All right, so looking at the chart, Democritus was born first and followed by Aristotle. So if we look at just respect your elders, right? You would think that Aristotle would respect Democritus. Why didn't Aristotle respect Democritus, right? Uh, close, but no, there's something called a hierarchy. Yeah, you basically there's a hierarchy like you have with the British monarchy, you have a class system. And Aristotle was higher in the class system, that is, his descendants had more wealth that they could promote their thinking. Now, today we know that Democritus um, is correct. How, would they know back then? Would they have been able to test? I don't, that's a good question. We don't really know that for sure. Um, however, earth, fire, air, and water is pretty um, open. That is, it's pretty flexible, right? Um, but we do know that uh, Antonio Lavoisier, you know, the father of chemistry, he was able to do a few things that contradicted what Aristotle thought. That is, he thought air... Um, was an element. Aristotle thought air was an element. And then Democritus, oh, correction, Antonio Lavoisier proved that air was oxygen, right? Made of oxygen. It was a mixture. That's a good question. Um, I was watching. Uh, the case for Christ over the weekend, and they talked about manuscripts, and they said that today there's only like four manuscripts um, associated with Aristotle, of his writings. So we know that he existed, obviously, um, but there's not a lot out there as far as what he wrote. Um, primarily, I'm sure there's four manuscripts are associated with earth, fire, and water. Oh, how did he die? I don't know. Let's do a search real quick. Okay, so the main point we want to get from Table 4.1, comparing Democritus to Aristotle, is that Democritus believed that it was something associated with empty space, right? So something was associated with empty space, something moves through empty space, and Aristotle didn't agree with that. He didn't think empty space was possible. He just thought earth, fire, air, and water. He couldn't wrap his brain around it into space. So you might want to note that. That's one of the most important things to remember about Aristotle, is that empty space cannot exist. That was his thinking. He was alive before um, Joseph Priestley. Yes, we read about him. Uh, I think last week we read about Joseph Priestley. And what did he do for a living? What did Joseph Priestley do for a living? He was a priest. He's a minister, right? I didn't know how I knew that. Uh, Joseph Priestley. <laughs> <laughs> Don't deny the last name. So he was, a, um, he was a priest. But he in his kitchen, he worked with some metal and some acid. He produced some hydrogen gas. And he captured the gas and he put it in a pig bladder and he exposed it to a can. What's more flammable, hydrogen or oxygen? Hydrogen. Hydrogen, why? Well, yeah, oxygen is going to make the candle burn faster than make CO2. When you put the hydrogen in the, in the flame, it's going to make water. 
So because it's making water, you have another compound being formed you don't normally get. You get some when you burn, like sugar, water is formed just a lot, not as much. So it's a lot more flammable because of the production of the, of the water. So Priestley, he was born in 1733, not too much sooner than um, John Dalton. So people were working on new, new ideas. This guy was, he was a minister, so his family most likely had a little bit more money or was a little more well, more well off. Um, and then we have, remember Antonio Lavoisier comes along, and he had a lot of money. His family was very well off. Right? And he, what, he, what element did he discover? Oh. Oxygen. Oxygen. Remember he discovered oxygen? And then John Dalton comes along. Now John Dalton, that's pretty significant what he did. He came up with the table. He put the gases in a Democritus was 76 years old when Aristotle was born. How old, um, how long did uh, Democritus live? A while. How many years old was he when he died? 90. He was 90. He lived in 90, right? So, 76, Aristotle's born. So by the time he's like 86, right, Aristotle's 10 years old, he's probably maybe heard about Democritus, but I mean, you're supposed to respect your elders. If you're 10, right, and you go see an 86-year-old man, you should be like, okay, maybe you can teach me something, right? However, they didn't, they didn't see eye to eye. Obviously, Aristotle saw things different than Democritus. He did not build on what Democritus thought. Aristotle did not build on what Democritus thought. Why? Most likely it didn't come from a lot of money. Usually back then, this is true today, when we have class systems, if you have money, you tend to have the ability to, you know, well, I had this money because my previous ancestors had these right things to say, that's why we should listen to me. Are you following me? I mean, Trump, I mean, he would, he would make that argument. What do you think it was when John Dalton came up with his table of the elements? Raise your hand. 200 years ago? Any, any further back than that? It was about 250, 280. That's actually a pretty good guess. I'm impressed. Revised Democritus' idea based on the results of scientific research he conducted. In many ways, Democritus' Dalton interested in the weather. He was a Quaker. That means his family most likely did what? Farm. Yeah, they were raising crops. Understanding the importance of weather as a farmer can determine whether you're going to be successful or not. If you can predict that it's going to, you're going to be a good year to grow crops, then you plant more. All right. If it's not going to be a good year, you, you tend to plant a little bit less, so you don't you know, waste seed, waste time. You'd want to do something else if it's not going to be a good year. You want to hunt more, right? Hunting and gathering, so you might want to get more meat, still more meat. What college did uh, John Dalton graduate from? Did he graduate from Cambridge? Or uh, Westminster? Cambridge, because you put that first. Alright, let's survey. Round the class. Cambridge. Cambridge, one. Go to Cambridge first. Two. Just raise your hand for Cambridge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Actually, um, no. Mr. Sackler, this is a true Raise your hand for Westminster. One, two, three. Alright. Yeah, oh, you want to say neither? Yeah. What college did he graduate from? Uh, he didn't graduate from college. Very good, he didn't graduate from college. You were Ooh, a college. Father of what? Raise your hand. Uh, Raise your hand. Uh, Rachel? Biology. biology, very good. <laughs> so, I mean, you're not the father of biology with, unless you have some means to financially support an expedition and study life a little bit. So Aristotle did come from fun some finances. He wouldn't be the father of biology if he did the, the conflict that Aristotle and Democritus had, right? Had. Now, Aristotle, he was like, there's no such thing as empty space. And Democritus is saying that there is empty space. So if you go back to the Pythagoreans, they were really big on numbers. This is true today. I mean, if you want to be big in science, you've got to really know, know math well. 
like Einstein, E equals MC squared, came up with his own formula, and then Newton, right, you got calculus, got a bunch of formulas there. So, if you want to be big in science today, you have to know your math, right? So, at this time, um, Aristotle's thinking, well, you know, I don't know if the numbers are really that important. I think that the word is pretty important, too. Right? He, Aristotle was almost thinking, he's a philosopher, he's almost thinking the word is more important than the number. Because Democritus is saying that the number is a little more important. Because one doesn't equal zero, right? When you have zero, what does zero mean? Nothing. Nothing, yeah. right? So that would be translated to empty space. Do you understand? So Democritus is saying, look, if I have one atom and you can't take half of it, it's undividable, then there must be nothing. Right? Because there's, there's space here, but there's space in between me and the wall, so there's going to be, you know, there's going to be some nothing going on there that the atoms are moving through. That's what Democritus is thinking, is that there's nothing, and there's an atom you can't take half of. It, right? Now, both of these theories were a little bit contrary to many uh, in the church at that time because they're still thinking ex nihilo. And Aristotle is definitely not thinking ex nihilo. He's thinking earth, fire, and water. Everything is made of that. But Democritus, really, he's almost on the line of ex matria where you've got these different types of matter. Are you following me there? Where you have the atom. There's more than one type of atom. That's what Democritus was... That was his conclusion, right? So he's basing that on math. He's falling back really on the Pythagoreans that numbers do play a role in philosophy, right? In your thinking, the conclusions that you make. Democritus is saying that. John Dalton, he was from England. He was a school teacher. What was his family like? Did they, what did they believe? What were they? Christian. They were Quaker, yes. They were Christians. You ever seen little Quaker oats? Yes. So they wore those specific uniforms, so he grew up as a Christian. His dad uh, was a farmer, right? And uh, he made some type of farm equipment. He was a hand loom weaver, is what he did. So did his family have a lot of money? No. No. He didn't have enough money to go to college. He never even went to college. So he didn't get a, he didn't get a degree. He was a teacher, though. He got hired on to be an English school teacher. Um, and then he got promoted to being a principal, right? Um, so within uh, four years, he became the pre-made principal of the school, right? He remained there until 1793, at which time he became the math and philosophy tutor at the New College of Manchester. So he went to the New College of Manchester as a tutor there. Now, while at the New College... Dalton joined the Manchester Library, correction, the Manchester Literary and Phil Philosophical Society. Now, what did membership grant Dalton? Access to the laboratory. Yeah, it granted him access to the laboratory facilities where he could do research on these projects, these ideas that he had. So it's just interesting, you know, to know some background about John Dalton. He never graduated.